How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the Wiki Code Quickies. Weekly updates for tech news, coding tricks and tips and more. As always, I'm your host, NobrePM, and in today's episode we will take a look at the benefits of micro frontends. Throughout this episode we will discover what a micro frontend is, how micro frontends work, what are the best practices of micro frontends, how to adopt micro frontend architecture, why micro frontend matters, what are the benefits of micro frontend architecture, and we will also take a look at a very big conclusion at the end. So without further ado, let's take a look at what is a micro frontend. A micro frontend is a microservice testing approach to front end web development. The current trend is to build powerful and feature rich web applications that resist to top of a microservice architecture. Over time, the micro frontend architecture becomes a part of a application, but often it is developed by a separate team. With time, the app grows and gets more and more difficult to maintain, as most of you know probably. This type of application is called a front end monolith. To solve this problem, the concept of the micro frontend was born. So a micro frontend is more friendly and less bulky. It also splits the entire application by business domain across the entire stack, which enables frontend teams the same level of flexibility, testability and velocity that backend teams get from microservices. Heading into 2022, with new web apps, the front end is becoming bigger and bigger, and back end is getting less important. Now, by all means, I'm not dismissing back end, but most of the code in micro front end architecture and the monolithic approach doesn't work for large web applications. There needs to be a tool for breaking it up into smaller modules that act independently. So the solution to the problem is micro frontend. Micro frontend code is written only in pure JavaScript and any of the JavaScript frameworks used in micro frontend from one framework to another. Micro frontend code is written only in pure JavaScript and any of the JavaScript frameworks used can migrate from one framework to another. Micro frontend best practices and strategies is to build a modern web application with multiple teams using different JavaScript frameworks. The main concept behind micro frontend architecture is to be technology independent, isolate team code, create team prefixes, favor native browser features over custom APIs, and build a resilient web design. So let's break them down. What does it mean to be technology independent? Each team chooses and upgrades the stack without coordinating with other teams and creates custom elements to hide implementation details. By isolating the code, you will never share the runtime even if teams use the same framework. Build an independent application self-contained. Do not rally on shared state or global variables. Creating team prefixes means using naming conventions where isolation is not possible. Namespace CSS, local storage, events, and cookies to avoid collisions and clarify ownership. Always favor native browser features over custom APIs. Instead of building a global PubSub system, use browser events for communication. If there is a need to build a cross-team API, Try to keep it as simple as possible. At the end, build a resilient web design. Features should be useful even if JavaScript is unable to execute. To improve perceived performance, use universal rendering and progressive enhancement. Now let's take a look at what the best practices of microservices actually are. I would name five of them. Single SPA meta frameworks, multiple single page apps, team prefixes, isolating micro apps into iframes and different modules. Now let's pick them apart a bit. The single SPA meta frameworks combines multiple frameworks 
on the same page without refreshing the page, such as React, View, Angular, One, Two, and so forth and so on. Multiple single page application lives at different URLs for shared functionalities applications. Use MPN or browser components. Isolating micro apps into iframes using Windows. Post message APIs and libraries to coordinate and iframe shares APIs exposed by their parent window. Use different modules to communicate over shared event bus. Each module is working on its own framework as long as it handles incoming and outgoing events. So how can we adopt and also integrate a micro frontend architecture? First of all, integration in the browser. Web components provide a way to create fragments of frontend imported into web application. Those fragments can be packaged into microservices together with the back end. Completed both logic and visual representation. Using this approach, front-end applications reduced to routing make decisions involving which set of components display and orchestration of events between different web components. So web components allow the creation of reusable components imported into web applications. These are like widgets imported into any web page. Those are currently working in browsers such as Chrome, Opera, and Firefox. If the browser does not support web components natively, compatibility is accomplished using JavaScript polyfills. In case you didn't know, a polyfill is a piece of code, usually JavaScript on the web, used to provide modern functionality on older browsers that do not natively support it. Web components consist of four main elements used separately or all together. This would be custom elements, shadow DOM, HTML imports, and HTML templates. So let's go for each of them. Custom elements, first of all. You can create custom HTML tags and element with custom elements. Each element has its own CSS style and script. The only standard required is to put hyphen to avoid conflicts with new HTML elements. It is the DOM that combines HTML, CSS, and JavaScript inside a web component. Separated from the main documents DOM, only then these are inside the component. The main method of communication between web components is by firing events. For web components, HTML imports are the packaging mechanism. HTML imports tell the DOM the location of the web component. In the context of microservices, import remote location of service contains a component to be used. HTML imports is a method to reuse and include HTML documents via other HTML documents. Predefined components as HTML imports, where each of them includes its own style and script, this decides on the top level that the HTML import presents in the DOM at the moment. And the imported document handles the rest of the things. The HTML template element holds client-side content not rendered when the page is loaded. In order to understand the implementation of micro frontend architecture, React.js app, it is good when Web applications are developed independently and changes to the element are done without being blocked by other elements and or breaking others. So, so in conclusion, integration has to be as simple as possible in micro frontend architecture. Also, the standardization of UI UX styling guidelines throughout material design and bootstrapping is a must, as well as top tier communication with the team to ensure that everything is running smoothly. All these micro frontend architecture best practices help us to solve one major problem, and that is scalability. An application that tends to grow significantly introduces numerous issues and conflicts, splitting the code into teams and applying the right logic to deliver good quality technology rendering and fast solutions to the world. And with this being said, ladies and gents, thank you so much for your attention. So I say to you now, goodbye and catch you on the flip side.